Oh! Shh! We're here in the wilderness. We've just parked our bike. Let's put our cover on it, and then we're gonna go look for something to shoot. When I say Andrew and I are looking for something to shoot, I was being honest. We're looking for something to shoot with our GoPro and for this video. And in this video, we're going to be shooting the bike on it and talking about what we love about this bike, what we hate about it, and who we think this bike is for. Toughest, the most rugged electric bike we've ever reviewed on the channel. It's the Bike On It Warthog MD750. This is the Hummer of electric bikes. This thing is awesome. Andrew, give us a little overview of this bike. Yeah, this bike is massive with huge tires, 26 by four and a half inch fat tires, a Bafong 750 watt mid-drive motor with a SRAM X5 nine, nine gear shifter. This bike rips. If you're hauling out a carcass, it can hold up to 500 pounds of towing capacity. So this is definitely the Hummer of e-bikes. <laughs> Almost fell off that. Features I love about this bike, it's got really high-end components. It's got the SRAM X5 shifter, Tektro hydraulic brakes with 208 millimeter disc brakes, quad piston brakes as well. The light is ultra bright on here. It's really compact and small, but it's really bright at nighttime. I was really impressed riding around at nighttime and being able to see in the dark. Really beautiful color display that's easy to read during the day. Just massive 26 by four and a half inch um, Kenda Juggernaut tires. They handle off-roading terrain perfectly fine. It's got air suspension on the front too, which is really high end for this. I thought it was gonna be hydraulic suspension, so I'm really impressed that they put air suspension on this. Favorite thing about this bike is going to be the 750 watt mid-drive motor. Our mid-drive motor is always gonna be a torque sensor, so it fills how much pressure you put on the pedals. We've reviewed a, a, quite a few torque sensor bikes, and all three of the torque sensor bikes that we've reviewed do not have actually a throttle on there. So that's what's really nice about this bike. It does have a walk mode option. It's got two options. You can either use a throttle, which is when you're off of the bike, it kind of pulls it a little fast. We'll show you what that looks like. So it's pretty quick, but there is an option to go all the way down and drop it into walk mode. That's where you press all the way negative down and then you hold down the negative sign and then now it kind of cruises pretty casually. So now you're in walk mode and you could do this going up the hills. If you have all your gear on there and you yourself are, have your, your backpack and you're wearing a lot of gear and you're having to walk this heavy bike, it's nice to have that walk mode. So if you're looking for a hunting bike or a bike for camping to get you in and out of places where it's gonna be heavy, a lot of gear, potentially rough terrain going up hills like this, make sure it has a walk mode. Special shout out to Bike On It for sending us this bike and all these accessories to review. The bike on its own only comes with one battery. We have two removable batteries here. Um, and then we also have this front basket and we've got these bags Penny here. Bags. Yeah, tell us about these bags. Yeah, these are pannier bags. Um, it's really awesome because you actually have two side bags. You have a top bag that's huge. Like I said, this can have 500 towing, 500 pounds of towing capacity, so it could be a carcass or it could be all your gear on here as well. But this bag actually right here pops off. This is really cool. And then you can actually pull out these straps that act like a backpack. So if you just have some backpack gear that you're not wanting to haul, but you want to be able to carry a backpack, you can convert this pannier bag into a backpack, throw this on your back and start hiking up the mountain as you please. So but they did send us this rear rack as well. A few other things that I forgot to mention was the pedals. These are CNC metal with nice spikes so they actually hold onto your shoes. Especially if you're in the backcountry hunting, you're gonna be stepping in mud. You need something that's gonna stick to your feet as you pedal. The removal battery makes it really nice because if you're hunting out for long times and you don't have a generator and you don't wanna bring a generator with you, you can always buy extra batteries or you could also use like the EcoFlow that we've reviewed to actually charge up the batteries on the go too. All right, Andrew, tell us what you don't like about this e-bike. One thing that I've noticed about this bike is it's got really nice wide handlebars, which is awesome for control. When you get in some tight trees, it's pretty tough to get them squeezing through there. So you gotta kind of like maneuver really carefully. You can't go really fast through them. It's not like on a downhill mountain bike where you have a lot more nimbleness to it. The other thing is, is this cable management up here. 
it's kind of all over the place. There is some nice in-frame um, wiring, but in this very front, it looks all crazy. The other thing is, is you have to buy all these accessories. It'd be nice if all the accessories came with the bike. Um, I understand there's a charge for all this upgrading, but at least one type of rack, like the rear rack would be nice if it came standard, but you have to buy the rear rack, the front rack, um, the bike cover, the pannier bags. So by the time you spend all that and the extra battery, you are spending it quite a bit of money on a bike. This thing without the batteries is 70 pounds. With two batteries, it's like 87 pounds. So it is pretty heavy to, to get through tight spots. Luckily, you do have the throttle or the walking mode to get through those spots, but if you had to carry it, it is pretty tough. If you have the fender with the rear rack, it rattles. So we just had to remove it because if we would have been recording this whole video, it would have been tapping the whole time. So we ended up removing that rear fender because it's a pretty poor design. And then battery, I'm not really sure from what I can see on the, my battery levels and everything that's going on, I don't think I'm going to reach half of the range that it's quoting on the, on the websites. So I'm at 85% right now. We haven't even gone that far and I have two batteries in it. So I can only imagine you're not going to go as far as you want if you're on um, pedal assist level five versus one. So definitely if you want to go far distances, you probably want to keep the pedal assist levels low. My main criticism for this e-bike is it's tall. So I'm about, I'm 5'10", and for me, I think that's kind of the lower limit. If you're any shorter, it's going to be too tall for you to, to really be able to control. On top of that, it's heavy, and so being tall and heavy, it can be kind of a cumbersome bike to get on and off of, especially when you have all these bags on the back and you're trying to swing your leg over. At our next stop, we're going to tell you who we think this bike is most suitable for. All right, let's keep riding. Oh, you okay? Yeah. A regular mountain bike would have actually made it over that log. I shouldn't have hit it. Definitely should have noticed it as I was coming around. It's kind of my fault for not paying attention. Which brings up another point. If you're out riding or you're out hunting and you're away from camp and let's say you get injured hiking or during the ride for whatever reason, sprain your ankle, fall, hurt your knee, and you're quite a ways away from base camp, you can use this bike because it still has a throttle and get yourself out of there and to safety. Something you wouldn't be able to do if you're just hiking on foot, fall, get hurt, you'd kind of be stranded. Uh, the other thing is this bike isn't just for hunters. I can see because it has all this ability to store stuff, if you want to ride into the back country to go camping, this would be a great way to access places and go camping uh, in locations that you otherwise would have a more difficult time trying to get to. Uh, we're going to Check out Andrew here, make sure he doesn't have any worse injuries. Check out the spike and then we're gonna keep riding. So we're gonna talk about who we think the bike on at Warthog is most suitable for. What do you think, Andrew? Yeah, one thing that came to mind for me is, especially if you're getting older as a hunter, your knees are giving out hauling weight going down hills i was just thinking i was coming down this down this mountain i was like man i remember when i actually went on a backpacking trip had a 50 pound bag on my back and i went down like eight miles at the end of it my knees felt so brittle i felt like i was super old which i i am getting old this would be perfect for someone who has knee issues and loves to hunt the use case scenario for this is you're going to set up base camp and then from your camp or from your car you're going to go to your favorite hunting spot wherever that may be it's usually quite a ways away from your camp or your car. And so this is gonna be the best way to get to that location easily. Or if you need to check hunting cameras, this will be a quick and efficient way and a quiet way to go from camera to camera uh, without exerting, you know, over exerting yourself. This is just working smarter, not harder. And if you have the ability to, and you have the right trails, this is a great bike for it. The toughest, the most rugged, the Hummer of electric bikes. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any other questions, make sure to check out our full review on ebikepedia.com. Remember, when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.